Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A pickup truck from Mazda, the BT53 L4x2 AT and a mid-size SUV from Nissan, the Terra VL4x4 AT. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two compact SUVs, the GAC GS4 GDI versus the Maxxis D60 Pro. On Autopedia, we'll talk about how a supercharger works. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the all-new Geely M Grand as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus. We'll be right back after this short break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Mazda. Can sleek be used to describe a pickup truck? This car review checks out the Mazda BT50 3-liter 4x2 at which some are described as sleek. When Mazda first rolled out the latest generation BT50 pickup, many noticed it was unmistakably a Mazda. It had the signature Mazda grille and many other styling cues found in Mazda sedans and crossovers, including the sleek LED headlights. Still at 5,280mm long, 1,870mm wide, and 1,785mm tall, the BT50 with a dual cab and cargo bed was unmistakably a practical pickup, albeit a little more stylish than other pickups in the local market. The soft curves and subtle lines nonetheless convey strength and durability. The Mazda BT-53 L 4x2 AT is one of the three variants of the new pickup made available locally, the others being the 4x4 AT and the 4x2 MT. The BT-54 x 2 is distinguished by the signature Kodo front grille with black finish and body-colored power adjustable and folding side mirrors. It comes standard with LED headlamps, fog lamps, intermittent windshield wipers, aluminum side step, bed liner, 17-inch aluminum wheels with silver finish and 25565R17 tires. The Mazda BT50 interior can be described as SUV-like in look and feel and roomy enough for five good-sized adults. And like all Mazdas, the dash and instrumentation, soft rim finishes, and services can be described as Spartan and minimalist but on the premium side of things. The BT54 x 280 comes with comfortable molded seats with black fabric that complement the dark trim and finish of the cabin surfaces. 
The driver's seat adjusts six ways, the front passenger's four ways, but only manually. The urethane steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features switches and buttons for audio and Bluetooth functions as well as standard cruise control. There's an overhead console with sunglass holder. The single zone climate control system with manual controls comes with rear vents. Other convenience features include remote keyless entry and power windows with one touch up down function. The BT54 x 2 audio system comes with the now commonplace 7 inch LCD touchscreen with USB and Bluetooth connectivity and 6 speaker system. However, it does feature Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. The BT50 is powered by a 2,999cc 4-cylinder DOHE diesel engine with intercooler and turbocharger that maxes out at 190 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 450 Nm of torque from 1,600 to 2,600 RPMs. The 6-speed automatic transmission feels quite efficient at keeping the engine working within the ideal torque range, making it both easy to crawl in traffic or cruise on highways. Mazda is candid about giving the BT50 a light steering feel for maneuvering easily on city streets, elevated and at-grade tollways and countryside roads. The suspension system uses double wishbones in front and leaf springs in the rear. Quite noticeable is the quiet cabin that Mazda says comes from the use of foam fillers in strategic locations around the cabin, along with sound insulating carpets and tighter door and window seals. The Mazda BT53 L4x2 AT is equipped with a list of standard safety and features that include dual front airbags anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control with traction control, hill descent control, hill launch assist. Rear sensors and reverse cameras help make parking the BT50 easier. One has to get the BT50 3L4x4 to benefit from Mazda Active Safety technology that includes lane departure warning, autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, automatic high beam control, and forward collision warning. Pickups have truly become lifestyle vehicles. And yes, the BT50 is a sleek example of how pickups can define their owner status and personality. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Ambition. It's not a destination nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards. To push. To the extremes. To race. 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 That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. There's another SUV in the market that promises to provide not only style but also substance. It's the MG HS SUV from MG Philippines. MG Philippines described its new offering for 2022 as a modern, feature-laden, safe and value-rich SUV steeped in MG's rich British heritage. We were very happy with the reception with the, our first MG ZS and then the MG RX5. And this opportunity with the MG HS expands the choices of our MG buyers to be able to get again another well-equipped model, a very exciting, young-looking, dynamic SUV 
with very good specs and yet very affordable positioning. The MGHS is powered by a 1.5 inline 4 DOHT turbocharged petrol engine that produces 169 PS and 250 Nm of torque, made into a 7 speed twin clutch Sportronic transmission. Inside the cabin are sport bucket seats, a dashboard that features 12.3 inch virtual driver information center, and a large 10.1 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, and multimedia functionality, as well as a panoramic stargazer sunroof. MG Philippines says it's the first product launch of the year that offers premium features and style, a plush and comfortable ride, fine driving dynamics, and a very attainable price point. The most important is we acknowledge that people always now are responsible buyers. So we are not only offering a car that is well equipped, we're making sure that it will be a responsible purchase. Until April 30, 2022, the MGHS will be available at an introductory cash price of 1,158,888 pesos for the MGHS SUV Alpha variant and 1,208,888 pesos for the Trophy variant. The MGHS is just the first of many global models that MG Philippines will launch this year, said Attorney Alberto B. Arcelia, President and CEO of MG Philippines. We'd like to invite everyone to check out the 39 dealerships that we have for MG in the Philippines nationwide. We are offering today a very exciting product, the MG HS. Suzuki vehicle owners in Cavite now have a new and easily accessible service center and showroom for their maintenance needs or for checking out the latest offerings of the Pioneer Compact Car distributor in the country. Now with the Cavitenos, of course, with the next mile in the forefront, we are committed to give them our support in terms of providing the Cavitenos with a fuel-efficient product as well as a beautifully designed car with up state-of-the-art technology. The newest of Suzuki Philippines network of 72 distributors and service centers nationwide can be found along Antero Soriano Highway in Barangay Batong Dalig in Kawit, Cavite. Sitting on a 2,000 square meter lot, Suzuki Auto Kawit features six service bays and a 360 square meter showroom for six vehicles, with facilities and designs strictly adhering to the brand's corporate standards. For a long time, a lot of the uh, Suzuki car owners here um, had to go elsewhere to get their car serviced, but now we're expecting a bigger volume. That's why we prepared a huge facility for the Cavitenos to enjoy. According to Suzuki Philippines Vice President and General Manager for Automobile, Heichi Suzuki, the new partnership with NXT Mile Motors headed by Mark Angelo Tiongson will help Suzuki reach more Filipinos looking for a reliable mobility partner. To all the Cavitenos out there, or to everyone in the South, I invite you to visit our dealership. Our official Facebook page is at Suzuki Auto Kawit, so you can find all the contact details there. And we promise that once you get here, um, nothing but the best experience awaits you. Mitsubishi Motor Philippines will gift early bird buyers of the new expander with a free two-year maintenance and interior disinfection package. Mitsubishi said that the gift is for buyers who reserve their new expander from March 5 to April 30. The two-year after-sale service plan follows a specific maintenance and parts replacement schedule designed to protect holders from costly repairs down the line while guaranteeing expert technical care and genuine parts. The plan covers the 1,000 to 25,000 kilometer checkup for early buyers of the Expander, Mitsubishi's best-selling seven-seater MPV. According to Takeshi Hara, MMPC President and CEO, the special PMS package for early bird buyers of the Expander aims to provide them an all-encompassing ownership experience that they can freely enjoy and be confident behind the wheel. BMW Group is accelerating its transformation towards sustainable mobility, preparing what it calls a comprehensive leap in technology for its new class. As part of this transformation, BMW is raising production targets for fully electric models. Already, BMW has 15 fully electric models in production, covering around 90% of its current segments. BMW said that these include models like the BMW i4, BMW iX, and Mini SE, as well as the four high-volume BMW model series, the 3 Series, 5 Series, the X1, and the X3. The year 2022 will see the launch of the BMW i7. The BMW Group expects sales of its fully electric vehicles to increase rapidly, buoyed by the fast-growing range of products and strong demand for fully electric vehicles. BMW aims to have more than 2 million fully electric vehicles on the roads by 2025. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I'm 
ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Isuzu D-Max into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models, belonging to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits the GAC GS4 GDI against the Maxus G60 Pro in a spec to spec comparo. The compact SUV segment is crowded with a wealth of options, making it a buyer's market. In this market, the driving force for new entrants as well as old is value for money. Two options that offer some value for money are the GAC GS4 GDI and the Maxus D60 Pro. At 4,545mm long, 1,856mm wide, and 1,668mm tall, and with a 2,680mm long wheelbase, the GAC GS4 sits quite well in the compact SUV segment. Also sitting quite well in the segment is the Maxxis D60 Pro, which is 4,720mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,736mm tall with a 2,760mm wheelbase. GAC Motor Philippines outfitted the GS4 with a bold-looking grille, LED headlamps with daylight running lights, LED taillights and turn signals, metal chrome accents on the tailgate, rear fog lights and high-mounted LED brake light. The second-generation GS4 also features power-adjustable side mirrors, shark fin antenna, panoramic sunroof, and 17-inch aluminum alloy wheels. Maxxis outfitted the D60 Pro with halogen headlamps, power-adjusting side-view mirrors, roof rails, daylight running lights, rear fog lamp, rear window defogger, black radiator grille with silver highlight as well as 17-inch alloy wheel and 215.65 R17 tires. The new GS4 cabin is fitted and loaded with features that give it some value for money, starting with passive entry, passive start system. The GS4 interior features black and tan seat leather upholstery that match the side panel trim and dash. The driver's seat manually adjusts six ways and the front passengers four ways. The rear seat for three reclines splits and folds 60-40 and comes with a fold-down center armrest with cup holders. The instrument panel features analog dials and a 3.5-inch digital display and the leatherette trim steering wheel comes with controls for audio, hands-free phone system, and cruise control. The air conditioning system comes with PM1 level filtration system and vents for rear seat passengers. The Maxxis D60 Pro features sporty fabric upholstery for the seats. The driver's seat manually adjusts six ways. The front passenger seat slides and reclines. The second row seats for a three split 60-40, slides and reclines and comes with center armrest. It is equipped with power windows, central door locking, manual air conditioning with rear air vents, a multi-function steering wheel, cruise control but not keyless entry with push start. The new GS4 arrived with an 8-inch LCD touchscreen for the infotainment system which features Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, USB port, EM FM radio, and 6 speakers. The D60 Pro also comes with an infotainment system that uses an 8-inch touchscreen display and features a USB port, Bluetooth connectivity, and 6 speakers. The GAC GS4 is powered by a 3rd generation Euro 5 compliant 1.5 liter turbocharged engine made into a 6 speed automatic gearbox that produces 166 horsepower at 5000 revolutions per minute and 265 Nm of torque between 1700 to 4000 rpm. The powertrain comes with 3 driving modes economic, manual, and sport. The GS4 suspension uses independent McPherson struts in front and independent multi link beams in the rear. 
The brake system uses discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The Maxxis D60 is powered by a 1490cc four-cylinder turbocharged and intercooled gasoline engine that generates 160 PS at 5,500 RPM and 250 Nm of torque from 1,700 to 4,300 RPM. The suspension features McPherson struts in front and a multi-link system in the rear. The brake system uses discs on all four wheels. The GS4 comes with a slew of driver assist and safety features that include anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, hydraulic brake assist, electronic stability program, hill start hold control, hill descent control, and electronic parking brake with auto hold, as well as parking sensors and rear view camera. Added for safety and security are dual front airbags, front side airbags, seat belts with pre-tensioner and force limiter in front row seats, three-point seat belts for second row passengers, isofix child safety seat anchors, second row child safety door lock, tire pressure monitoring system, and engine immobilizer with anti-theft alarm. The Maxxis D60 comes with electronic parking brake with auto hold, electronic stabilization program, emergency brake assist plus hill hold control, tire pressure monitoring system, and immobilizer. Other standard safety and driver assist features include driver and front passenger airbags, side airbags, three-point seat belts for five, isofix, reverse camera, and rear parking sensors. Both the GAC GS4 and the Maxus D60 deserve a first or second look and test drive for those looking to make the most out of their money on a compact SUV. fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has anti-oxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Mitsubishi Montero Sport. Mastery in motion. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Will Geely Philippines succeed with a passenger sedan as well as it has with crossovers SUVs and MPVs? Geely has launched the M Grand, looking to shake up the market as it did with their cool ring. Over two years into the Philippine automotive market, and after three SUVs launched since Geely's reintroduction in the country in 2019, Geely Philippines is 
making its way to the very popular sedan market. We now present to you the all new GD M Grand. We are offering you a sedan that will inspire you to elevate your life, be driven, and provide you another vehicles for your daily mobility needs. This vehicle has dominated the global market by being the top one best-selling Chinese sedan since 2012. Another amazing feat of this vehicle is its modular architecture as it shares the same body architecture with our full cool range. Same body, but on a smaller ride. As a subcompact sedan, the M Grand is endowed with a bigger body, which can even compete with current compact sedans in terms of cabin space, and overall utility. This is made possible as it also shares the same platform with GLE subcompact, the Cool Ray, called the B segment modular architecture, BMA. The all new M Grand was produced on GLE's new and advanced intelligent factory, which features 95% production automation, ensuring accurate and consistent assembly process. In addition, high-end quality materials are used for the M-Grand interiors to ensure uncompromised comfort and soft touch feelings. It comes with a very reliable, brand new engine and transmission system. Pop this open and you'll get a more refined 1.5 naturally aspirated DCVVT engine that produces a maximum horsepower of 102 and a maximum torque of 142 Newton meters. The M Grand is loaded with some of the latest automotive technologies, safety, health, convenience, fuel efficiency, resulting in a world-class vehicle that offers excellent driving pleasure. The Philippines is the first overseas market to launch the all-new M Grand after its debut in China last year. A testament to Geely's high confidence towards the Philippine market. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours.
Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Nissan has come up with major upgrades to the Terra. It's entry to the highly competitive 7-seater mid-size SUV segment. Carby takes a look at the upgrades. The Terra has been making inroads in the 7-seater mid-size SUV segment dominated by the likes of the Fortuner and the Montero since it was introduced locally back in 2018. This year, Nissan introduced some upgrades to its 7-seater Battler that now occupies space on the road that's 4,900mm long, 1,865mm wide, and 1,865mm at its tallest point. The wheelbase is a good 2,850mm long, with a minimum ground clearance placed at 225mm. The Terra arrived with a stronger-looking fascia dominated by a large V-motion chrome grille framed by a new bumper design. It features quad LED projector headlamps, C-shaped daytime running lights, and LED front fog lamps. The rear also got upgrades, tweaked tail lamps and rear bumper, wide LED signatures, distinctive chrome center finisher, rear spoiler, and shark fin antenna. The body-colored side view mirror comes with integrated turn signals as well as autofold and power adjust functions. The new 18-inch two-tone alloy wheels make the Terra that much more appealing. The chrome door handles also feature the intelligent key switch. The new Terra VL 4x4 automatic can be distinguished from the other new variants by its silver roof rails and side step. Other exterior features include mud guards, two-speed front windshield wipers with rain-sensing function, and single-speed intermittent rear wipers. Much more interesting are upgrades to the cabin which starts with the two-tone interiors, black leather for seats and burgundy red leather for the trim and center console padding. The zero-gravity type front seats feature 10-way power adjust with lumbar support for the driver and 4-way manual adjust for front seat passenger. The second row seats for three slides and reclines. The retractable armrest makes for a more comfortable ride if only two sit in the second row. It also splits, folds, and tumbles 60-40 and comes with a one-touch remote switch to make it easier to get into the third row. The third row has seats for two that can be reclined. It also splits, folds, and tumbles 50-50 to provide a flat surface to take in more cargo in the back. A smaller D-shaped steering wheel tilts but does not telescope. Wrapped in leather, it comes with controls for the audio, hands-free phone, drive assist display plus cruise control for the VL 4x4 automatic variant. Also wrapped in leather is the gear shift lever. The instrument meter cluster features a high contrast 7-inch advanced drive assist display. The Terra VL variant gets an electronic parking brake switch while the VE and EL variants have the traditional urethane gear shift lever. The overhead console comes with map lights and sunglass holder. For those who love gadgets, there are 12 volt sockets in the front center panel, center console, and luggage area. The VL variants also have a wireless charger, types A and C USB ports, and bottle and beverage holders all over. The new Terra comes with an intelligent key system, push button engine start stop and dual-zone automatic climate control with rear cooler. The infotainment system in the Terra also got an upgrade with the Nissan 9-inch advanced touchscreen display audio, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth or hands-free calling and audio streaming, as well as USB Type A and C tuner and iPod. It also comes with navigation as well as 8 Bose premium speakers. There's also an 11-inch flip-down monitor with HDMI input for the Terra VL. The new Terra still has the 2,488cc inline 4 diesel engine, the DOHC and variable turbocharger and intercooler that generates 190 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 450 Nm of torque at 2,000 RPM made it to a 7-speed automatic transmission with manual mode. The VL 4x4 automatic features a part-time 4-wheel drive system that can be shifted from 2 high, 4 high, and 4 low and comes with electronic locking rear differential. The Terra suspension system uses independent double wishbones with coil spring and stabilizer in front and multi-link system with coil spring and stabilizer bar in the rear. 
The brake system uses discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The powertrain, drivetrain, suspension, and high ground clearance add up to give the Terra capability for real off-road adventures, and all the while doing this in some comfort and safety. The new Terra now comes with an even fuller complement of Nissan Intelligent Mobility, enhancing safety and giving drivers and families the confidence to go on fun adventures. The new Nissan Terra now comes with intelligent forward collision warning, intelligent emergency braking, rear cross traffic alert while carrying over the lane departure warning, blind spot warning, and intelligent rear view mirror features from the previous model. It is also equipped with hill start assist and hill descent control. On the VL 4x4 variant, the intelligent around view monitor with moving object detection now comes with an off-road monitor. The new Terra also comes with the intelligent driver alertness that monitors drivers and alerts them when they need to take a break from driving. Also added for safety are multiple airbags, 3-point ELR seatbelts, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, vehicle dynamic control with 4-wheel active brake limited slip, parking sensors, high mount stop lamp, anti-theft system with alarm and engine immobilizer. The new Nissan Terra appears well equipped to fight toe to toe, spec to spec, with a competition in the seven seater mid size SUV segment. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we'll be talking about the supercharger. Superchargers and turbochargers, you hear these two terms thrown around interchangeably and can't really blame the people on the internet because they don't really know what it is, they have no idea what it looks like, much less know how it works. So we've covered turbochargers in a past topic, so this time we'll be covering the supercharger. So basically, let's start with the similarities, turbo and supercharger. Both of these things are called forced induction because you are force feeding more air into the engine. It's just that the way that they do it are different. A turbo uses the exhaust gases to spin a turbine that feeds air. A supercharger, on the other hand, uses a belt like this, connected to the engine, connected to the alternator, water pump, air cone compressor, that spins two rotors in here that also force more air in. Same principle, get more air, suck more air, blow more air, make more power. The main difference between the supercharger and turbocharger is of the hardware itself. Almost all turbochargers are two circular round things. Superchargers come in this rectangular package because inside here are two intermeshing lobes. They look like gears. So what they basically do is it's also an air pump. It goes like this, air goes in, gets forced out, creates pressure. Nothing different from a turbocharger in terms of principal operation, but how it operates is one is belt driven, one is exhaust driven. Now, let's address the popular notion, oh, superchargers are, have parasitic loss and all of that. No, it's not true. Whatever you radio and it, once again, it's not true. Yes, it takes some energy to turn this, but that energy is a lot less than what the energy that it gives. Because if it is parasitic loss, and you're actually using more energy to turn this than what it makes, then there's no point in installing this in the first place. Let's put that in numbers. To turn this thing here, the assembly here with the lobes inside, takes about 5 horsepower from the engine. But what this gives you in return is about 40 horsepower on this 1.5 liter Honda City engine. So power-wise, for a 1.5 engine, we're adding 40 horsepower more. Basically, the behavior is like stuffing a big 2.4 liter engine into a car this small. That's the easiest way to describe the driving style and result of a supercharger. It feels like a big engine. The power curve is actually a straight line from idle all the way to red line. It's one straight line. No dips, no curves, no nothing. And it's very, very linear, which makes it a great choice for racing because unlike turbochargers, which have surge and sometimes depending on what size the turbo is, there's a lag when you let go. It's not very great when you're coming out of a corner. This is more predictable when it comes to driving and racing. So turbocharger, supercharger, which is better? One is not better than the other, one does not make more power than the other. If you're doing this on your project car, say a Civic 1.8, there is a limit to how much horsepower you can make. Go over that limit, whether it's turbo or supercharger, then you'll break the engine. 
it all depends on really what you want and of course how much you're going to pay some people may say oh i'll spend 200 grand on a supercharger for 40 horses but if i do turbocharger it's only 130 140,000. i'll go with the cheaper option well, that's up to you but the biggest advantage of a supercharger system is most of these things are made in kit form so everything that you need to be able to install it comes with it so this one here actually installs in one day a custom turbo setup where everything will have to be fabricated from scratch will take about a week that's the fastest to an average of a week and a half to two weeks so you figure out how much your downtime is worth So that's the how and why it works of a supercharger. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of our Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Puch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you.